We are live. Let's see here. Nope, I'm trusting that everybody that's coming is showing up. Oh my gosh. Every time I do an Instagram live, it gives me a tutorial. Here we go. I'm good. Thank you for all of this wonderful stuff. Okay, here we go. Welcome, 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 beautiful ladies to module two of the Fem Power Masterclass. Ah, I'm so excited. Jenny Phil says, I found you. Yes. Hello, gorgeous. If you are just hopping on live, please drop me a comment. Tell me hello. If you are brand new to my world, this is the first time you are seeing me live. Please tell me first time in the comments so that I can welcome you into my world. And if you've watched me live before, please say hello because we like hang out and stuff. And this is amazing that you are here joining me once again. And if you are on replay, hashtag replay in the comments for me and do me the biggest, a most amazing favor and comment as if you are live. Okay, because I love going back through comments. I love seeing what everybody had to say. I love responding if it's appropriate. So please do comment as if you are live. Ooh, I'm seeing beautiful names all over the place. I see Ginger. I see Isla. Is that you? Is that, um, am I saying that properly? I see Kyria. Kyria says, I've never seen a live on Instagram before. Ooh, I have done a couple of them. I see Michelle. Hello, 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 beautiful, beautiful ladies. Okay, yesterday was hopping. So if this is like just popped up on your feed and you are watching but you didn't know that this was here, like you didn't plan on it, it just something that's happened to be on your feed, know that this is module two of a three module course called Fem Power. It is a completely complimentary masterclass that I am running this week. Module one was yesterday. Module three is tomorrow. And if you want to know where, you need to register for the course. So I will be putting the link to register for the course in the comments when I am finished with this live so that you can register for the course so that you can have access to module one yesterday and know where to find me for module three tomorrow because it will not be on Instagram live. Okay. Oh, it's Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Okay. Hello, love. And I see Amy. Woohoo. Have never seen this other thing on here. Awesome. So we're all learning. It has actually been a huge day of learning. I had a Q&A to do in one of my micro courses earlier today, and it's the first time I did a Zoom meeting and streamed it, live streamed it into the Facebook group. So that was freaking amazing. It is just a day of new and amazing, and I'm so excited for this. So we have, let's um do some housekeeping real quick, because like I said, this is Instagram Live. It's different from what I did yesterday. It'll be different from tomorrow. So, um, there is an I'm in graphic that you can share. You can find it in my stories, but if you register, it'll be in the link where you register, and it will also be in the, where it redirects you to after you register for the course, it will be in there also. So, the I'm in graphic, share it in your stories, share it in your feed, your Instagram post, your Facebook wall everywhere, all the places, and tag me, Sarah underscore P underscore Jordan on Instagram and Sarah Jordan on Facebook. When you tag me, your name goes in this cup. There's probably, I should have counted, there's probably 60 names in this cup right now, maybe more. And yesterday we gave away a total of like over $300 in, in, in free stuff. So it's very, 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 oh no, it was over 500 over $500 in free stuff. So very worth it to have your name in the cup. So the I'm in graphic is one way. Share this video right now. Ooh, I see Rachel's watching. Hello, love. So go ahead and share this Instagram live and drop shared in the comments for me because that's how I know that you shared the live. I will come back and read the comments. And if you have not said shared in the comments, I can't get your name in the cup. So 
please say shared in the comments for me as you're sharing the Instagram live. And we will dive in after I draw a name out of the cup. So yesterday I gave away 77 coaching dollars and I gave away a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one with me. And so today I'm actually going to dig a little deeper in here. I had grabbed someone just off the top, but so yesterday's, this is kind of fun. The only scissors I could find yesterday was like the fun, like crinkle cutters of my kids. And, um, today I actually found straight scissors. So I know whose names went in yesterday and I know whose names went in today, which is super fun. Um, that's a great question, Jenny. I'm not sure how to share an Instagram live either. Maybe it's the little guy at the bottom with the, the arrow. I'm not sure. So we're going to give away 111 coaching dollars today. So you can use this towards a one-on-one -on -one with me. You can use this towards a program with me that I'm running. You can use this towards something bigger and you will find out all of the different ways that you can use it throughout this course, but especially at the end. I usually save all of the offer pieces for the end so that if you're like, I'm good, I'm complete, you can leave or you can stay and listen to offers. I will mention things throughout the, the content because it's just, it's going to come up, but just know that whoever has this 111, you get to use it to anything that you want. And it is Katie Townsend Alvarado that just won 111 coaching dollars. So huge congratulations to Katie. If you know Katie and she's on Instagram, please go ahead and tag her. Or if you want to message her on Facebook and let her know, you can totally do that. Grab my notes back up here. Ooh, Kyria is telling y'all how to share it. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing with each other how to share an Instagram Live. This is awesome. This is growth. This is me growing. This is you growing with me, and it's amazing. Thank you. Okay, so yesterday, just a recap of yesterday, because not everyone was there, or maybe you haven't made it through the replay yet. I guess one more quick housekeeping piece. The replay, after you've registered for it, you will have all of the replay to all three modules until June 30th, and then they come down. So make sure you register because this is not going to be here for all eternity. You need to make sure you register so that you can make sure you get through all three modules and maybe hit replay a couple of different times even so that it really sinks in. I know if I hit replay two or three times on a course, I get so much more out of it. But it is all coming down on June 30th. Ooh, thank you, Jenny shared. Rachel says she's shared. Kyria has shared. Ooh, yay. Okay, awesome. So recap of yesterday. Yesterday we looked at the flaky, inconsistent woman who is a woman of her word and then, but it seems like if she's going to be in integrity and be a woman of her word, she's either choosing between quitting, which is not being in integrity, or she's choosing to push through. When really, if we begin to look at ourselves from a feminine perspective instead of what the narrative says, the narrative says, the patriarchy says that you should be the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The consistency that we're taught is consistency does not work with a woman. Just doesn't. Now, there are women who've made it work. Don't get me wrong. But at what detriment is always the question. So we, in the last 60, 70 years, have broke into the male-patterned world, the 9 to 5, 24-hour clock male-patterned world, and we've proven that we can do anything a man can do bleeding. And across the board, whether it's cancer, chronic fatigue syndrome, um, adrenal problems, across the board, women are 33 to 50% more sick than men. So we've proven that we can operate on a 24-hour clock and be the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, but at what detriment to our bodies as a collective? Huge detriment. 
And so at what point do we say, I'm not flaky, I'm not inconsistent, your model doesn't fit me. Instead of, I don't fit the model, how about the model doesn't fit me? At what point do we make that script flip and turn it around and say, okay, what model does fit me? What do I get to flow within that works so beautifully that I'm not having to choose between quitting and pushing through? That is like, I think we were live for like 90 minutes yesterday. So I've got chills just in the recap here. So make sure you register so that you can catch module one because it was freaking phenomenal. And now we're going to dive in to module two. Thank you, Amy. Amy has shared. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. So yesterday I spoke about the frustrations that I had in a business and day-to-day -day life. It was a, a network marketing business that I started in like 2011, 2012, something like that. I spoke about feeling like Wonder Woman and then feeling not like Wonder Woman. This week in particular, so... I have four children. Those of you that are brand new to my world, my name is Sarah Jordan. I am the Cycle Thinking Coach. I help women with their physical, their emotional, their spiritual, their financial, um, and there's one more. There's always five. I help you with all of these things from a cyclical perspective. And now, when I say Cycle Thinking Coach, most people immediately jump to bleeding, to periods. But if you are a woman, that actually radiates from your womb space. The cyclicality radiates from your womb space, regardless of whether you still have a period or not. So everything that I teach applies across the board to women. Doesn't matter if you're pregnant. Doesn't matter if you're breastfeeding and you're not bleeding. Doesn't matter if you've had a hysterectomy. Doesn't matter if you're in menopause or post-menopause. I have women that have success with what I teach from 13 to 60. It works. And so the way that cycles work, and I get to see them everywhere, and it's freaking beautiful, but you have a cycle every 60 minutes. You have a, and even within that, there's my, even more minute ones. You have a cycle every 24 hours. You have a cycle every seven days. You have a cycle every 28 days, every year, every seven, 49 years, and then when you begin to see the spring, summer, fall, and winter pieces of this in each individual cycle, you will see the spring, summer, fall, and winter pieces on the broad spectrum of life. And if you're really scratching your head right now, module one will make sense of that in an instant for you. So this week in particular, in April, my children, my older two, back up. I have four children. Um, I have two, a nine and a seven year old boy. And then I have a four and a two year old, two year old daughters. I've been married to my husband for 12 and a half plus years and we homeschool. They're home with me full time. Your mama don't get a break until the nanny gets here at one o'clock and then I come in and I work. And so, and that's only four days a week. So I get to be with my children as much as I desire to be with my children. I get to teach my children. I get to see the light bulb moments. I get to see them write a book for the first time and come show me this book about a beaver and a bird. These are the books that I received last week from my children that they made. Like, super freaking awesome. I get to teach them in the mornings and then I get to come hang out with you all in the afternoons. And it's a beautiful, beautiful rhythm that I have created and designed as my life. Rachel's throwing lightning bolts. Ooh, yes. Lightning bolts show me that there has been an energetic exchange with you and I. So it's like if you have a aha moment, if you are like, wow, this makes so much sense. Thank you so much, Sarah. Lightning bolts show me their, their energy, right? Energy. And so it shows me that there has been an energetic exchange between you and I. And I'm here giving you this free content it's, and it's freaking profound. And so the more you interact with me in the comments section, the more hearts you throw on this video, the more you're going to get from me. So it's a give and take. This is like you're sitting with me in my living room and we're having this conversation. 
So do this give and take with me. Do the comment section, comment, 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 throw some hearts as often as you see fit, throw some lightning bolts when there's an energetic exchange. Let me know that this is landing. Okay. And so in April, we started my older two children in karate and we had wanted to do that for quite some time. And it was only in the last year that financially we have been able to do that. Well, in December, they were still requiring masks for them. And I'm like, you know, because my kids are homeschooled, they've kind of been protected from the trauma of the last two years. And I'm not going to go put them in a situation now where they do an hour of PE, basically, with a mask. And so we didn't do it then. So we waited until April when the mandate was lifted. And so now they are in karate. And that's two days a week in the evenings. So on those two days a week... We do school in the morning. Mama has her afternoon work hours. We end actually about 30 minutes earlier than we used to, and I take them to karate. Last week, it was somebody at karate, actually, that was like, oh, yeah, we got swimming lessons last week and this week. I was like, oh, yeah, it's summer. We school year-round. We have long breaks in between here and there, but we school year-round. And I was like, oh, yeah, swimming lessons. That would probably be a really good idea since we haven't been able to do it since 2019. And so I called and they were like, yeah, we could get, you know, your older three in. The the baby is still too little to not do mom and tot. And so I was like, great, fantastic. (laughs) They would benefit from swimming lessons, so let's do it. And she's like, well, I have a heat that starts on Monday, so the Monday of this week. And then it goes for two weeks, and then I have one that starts like the very, very last day of June or something like that. And I was like, ideally... I would really like it to start this week, the 20th. And she said, let me see what I can do. And she managed to get all three of them into the same heat, the same weeks, everything for me this week. Now, my bandwidth is such that I can do karate no matter what week it is. But I knew that adding an hour in the morning, it's actually like an hour and a half to get there, get back, get everybody ready, and all of the things, if I was going to add that daily, it was going to need to be at a very specific point in my cycle if I was going to be able to handle it and not have a meltdown or multiple, not feel extremely overwhelmed, not be utterly exhausted, not be snappy with my children. If I was going to be able to handle it and be there for my kids in the way that I desire to be there, for my kids and give them this experience, this honestly is a life skill. If I was going to be able to do that, it needed to be at an ideal time for me, not just because this happens to be the week that they're doing swimming lessons. Had we not been able to get in for this heat when it was ideal for me, I would have shifted things. If they could only do it starting June 29th at a different point in my cycle, I would have shifted my afternoons and I would have basically blanked my work schedule because I knew I wouldn't have the bandwidth to do swimming and come hang out with y'all for a master class and turn around and go to karate in the evening. I would not be able to do that. And I know that about myself. But how many times in life do we say, okay, karate's going well. This is moving smoothly. I've got this incorporated into my schedule. I feel like I have a really good handle on this and I could add something else into my life. And we add something else into our life whenever. And all of a sudden the world crashes and we're like snappy, grumpy mommy and we don't want anything to do with this and we don't want to do this and we don't want to see people. And uh, excuse me, you wanted supper tonight? I don't know what you're going to eat. Go make some egg and cheese. How many times do we actually put ourselves in these situations and set ourselves up to fail? That's when the naggy voice in our head starts to say, you can't even take him to swimming and karate in a day. Come on, what's wrong with you? Gosh, if you could just fix yourself. You know, you're like 15 years of, of being a wife and you're like 10 years of parenting. Why can't you just... Take your kids to swimming and take them into karate in a day and not have a meltdown. Like, What's wrong with you? 
when in actuality, it has everything to do with your biology. You can do it, but when that naggy voice starts going in your head saying you can't, and here's the evidence, you haven't handled it well, the reality is you can do it. It's just a, a point in your cycle when you actually need to be turning inward. You need to be focusing more on self-care. You need to be focusing more on you, and instead, you extroverted scheduled your life. I first started learning about cycle syncing from a woman who was at the top ooh, of my network marketing company. She was an introvert who had gotten to the top, and I was like, well, all these classes I've been teaching aren't working, which means I must be an introvert because I don't like people. And so, I guess, teach me everything you know because you did it and I want to do it. Teach me what you know. The fact of the matter is, is that you have part of your cycle where you are an extrovert and you have part of your cycle where you are an introvert. Now, depending on whatever um, your extenuating circumstances are, how you were raised, what trauma is in your life, you may be more introverted more of the time or you may be more extroverted more of the time, but at the very base level of your cycle, you have both. This is why we can start to feel like we have a mental illness sometimes because, gee, last week I liked being around people and this week I hate people. What's wrong with me? Nothing. You have a cycle and it's freaking beautiful when you learn how to use it. So this week I have this free masterclass scheduled. It's huge. We have been marketing all over the place. I have amazing people in my world who are sharing the videos, who are sharing the I'm in graphics. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are changing lives by doing that. I have been marketing it since Sunday and I want to be able to show up with all of this amazing energy for you. But if I'd scheduled it for two weeks from now, I would have been like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to show up. Instagram live? I've, I've only done like four Instagram lives in my life. What? But because I schedule my business, I schedule my kids' extracurricular activities, I schedule my dates with my husband, I schedule my time with my kids, I schedule my dates with my kids, according to my cycle, I make everything work and flow. And so when I have all of these balls that I'm trying to juggle, it's working for me instead of working for everybody out there telling me what I should or should not be doing. Rachel says, nailed it. This is amazing. This is awesome. My thoughts on most days, very interesting. Stephanie says, awesome. Okay, so glad this is landing. So in two weeks, there's zero way that I would be able to take the kids to swimming lessons in the morning, come home, make lunch, get them down for rest time, come in here, hang out with y'all, run my business, turn around, take them to karate in the evening, come home, make supper, and then get them into bed and not be a puddle on the floor. I could do two of those three major pieces. I could do swimming lessons and karate. I could do swimming lessons and my work hours. Or I could do work hours and karate. But if you want me to do all three of them, in two weeks, it's not going to work. So like I said, had they put me in a different heat for swimming, I would have changed things in my work hours schedule. I would not be running a free master class at that point in my cycle, period. I just, I don't do that. But I wouldn't be doing it especially if I had swimming in the morning and karate in the evening. No way. Oh, Rachel. Rachel says postpartum is a real joy, quote unquote, some days. The thing about, and this is actually where I started. I had horrible postpartums. My first four postpartums were horrible. Two of them were live births, two of them were losses, and they were awful. And so when I got pregnant with my fifth pregnancy, I was like, not afraid to lose a baby, even though I probably should have been because I'd lost the previous two. I was afraid of postpartum depression, regardless of whether I kept the baby or not.
And so when I started my coaching business, my consulting business, I was looking to work with pregnant women and prepare them for postpartum so they could have a beautiful and amazing postpartum, which is what I did with my fifth and sixth pregnancies. Pregnancy and postpartum is just a year long mirror of our 28 day cycle. It's so cool. Okay. Let me know if this is landing ladies. I want to know how this is landing for you. Throw me some lightning bolts at the bare minimum. Let me know. <clears throat> so we're going to dive more into and we're going to look at the different pieces of your cycle and what is most ideal for what time. So right now I'm in the spring of my cycle moving into summer. I'm in my follicular phase moving into summer of my cycle. And we're going to look deeper at that in like 20 minutes or something like that. But today I want to share with you my period story. Yesterday I shared with you like how I was running a business, how I was running life and how it wasn't working and how I got it to start working. I want to share with you the very, very physical pieces of my period real quick because like I said, bleeding or not, you have a cycle, but I don't want to just ignore the people that have jumped in this course or like, I have PMDD, I have endometriosis, I have fibroid tumors. I want to address you and I want this to be absolutely pure gold. So even if you no longer have a bleeding cycle, maybe you had one of these problems and it led to the fact that you no longer have a bleeding cycle because maybe you had a hysterectomy or something like that. This is going to shed so much light on yourself or your sister or your best friend that had some sort of period problem. Okay. So 2014, the day before Thanksgiving, 2014, my house burned down. I'm sorry, not 2014. When I was 14 years old, the day before Thanksgiving, when I was 14 years old, my house burned down. I was not 14 in 2014. Anyway. <laughs> And we had spent the previous several months actually remodeling this house before we moved into it. And so it burns down. And so then I turned 15. I'm in my freshman year of high school and we're building this new house. That was really cool. Somebody just sent flames up. That's awesome. Okay, moving on. Squirrel. And so summer that I was 15, we are rebuilding this house. And I'm being paid to help the finishing carpenter work on our house. I remember vividly, vividly going to use the porta potty on the property because the house is burned. We need somewhere to use the bathroom while we rebuild the house. And needing to have a bowel movement and not being able to have a bowel movement. I was on my period, I was bleeding, and I remember pulling my butt cheeks apart, trying to make space enough for it to come through. But my periods were so heavy, so bad, the pain was so incredible, and ultimately my entire pelvic floor was so inflamed that only one orifice would work while I was bleeding. If I wanted to have a bowel movement, it came with extreme pain. If I wanted to urinate, it came with pain. And it wasn't like bladder infection pain. It was just crampy pain. If I had to pass gas, it came with pain. And so I told mom. And so she took me to the doctor. And the doctor's like, well, if you can't have a bowel movement, you obviously need more fiber in your life. Here, go take Benafiber. I'm like, that's not the problem. There's no room for it to come out. But whatever, I'll take your Benafiber. Took it for like three months, changed nothing. And so at that point it was, well, let's put Sarah on birth control, which led to other problems, which is not what we're talking about today. But I was on birth control for like four or five years until my husband and I decided that we wanted to have a baby. And so I started researching how to come off of the pill, how to not get pregnant for six months so that I could do a preconception diet and detox my system of all of the stuff that is in a pill. You actually have an increased rate of, you have an exponential by year increased rate of heart attack and stroke if you've been on the pill. 
Ooh, it's 333. So if you've been on the pill for one year, you have a increased risk for like five years of heart attack and stroke. If you've been on it for two, it's 10 years. If you've been on it for three years, it's like 15. And, and it just goes up and it's insane. And so I'm doing all of this research and I learn how to come off. I learn how my body actually works. I successfully learn how my hormones fluctuate and when we could get pregnant and when we couldn't get pregnant so that we can have six months not pregnant and actually detox without anything stopping the pregnancy. And we did that successfully, amazingly. <laughs> And then, and those periods weren't bad. So getting on the pill didn't fix the problem, but it did mask the problem so that it appeared to not be there anymore. It just created other problems. So the period pain went away when I went on the pill, came off the pill in 2011. No pain, no pain, no pain. Um, naive me is like, wow, it fixed it. No, that's not what happened. Gave birth to a son, gave birth to another son, had a second trimester loss with a third son, had a 10-week miscarriage with what I believe to be a fourth son. The, the son pieces here are very, very important. Focused and gave myself 16 months of space, making sure I did not get pregnant because I knew my body needed time to rest and to heal after those back-to-back -back losses. Got pregnant in 2017, did tons of research on the postpartum piece because I was like, I can't fight myself for my life again while I have an infant again. Had a beautiful postpartum. Six months to the day after my daughter, my first daughter was born, that period pain came back as if I hadn't had the previous six years without it like it had never gone away. Only this time I had three kids. I was holed up in a chair or on the floor in the fetal position for 30 hours of my cycle going <gasps> <gasps> and my five-year-old and my three-year-old and my infant going, mommy, are you okay? Mommy, are you okay? Are you okay? Don't touch me. If you've ever given birth before, what it would feel like was a contraction would just clamp down on me. And it would hold for like two to five minutes. And then when it would finally, re and it was worse if my bladder was full, if my bowels were full, or if there was gas that needed to come. And when it would release, I would gush. It was like I was laboring out my uterine lining. And then I'd be okay for about an hour, and then another one would <laughs> clamp down. Two to five minutes, gush. I'd be okay for about an hour, unless I needed to void a different orifice. In which case, it could be worse. It could last longer. And so my five-year-old, amazing, beautiful, he's nine now. He, um, very, very helpful, learned how to help mommy very, very quickly in that situation. And so I started doing research. I was like, I can't live like this. This is 2018. So winter of 2018, I had a 13-month-old that I was still nursing. And I did a juice fast. I was like, I would like to nurse to two years. My mom nursed me to two years and two months. I hadn't made it that far yet with my previous two. I was like, I want to do this, but I also need to do something for my system. And so I hadn't felt like I could cleanse at that point because I was nursing, but I was like, maybe a juice fast will allow me to keep my milk and not mess with her too bad. So I did a three day juice fast and pulled a bunch of stuff out of my diet after I had done like three weeks of nonstop research into traditional Chinese medicine, into acupuncture, into all of these different pieces, hoping, hoping that it would fix. I pulled meat out of my diet. I pulled sugar. I pulled dairy. I pulled grain. I pulled, I pulled, I pulled, I pulled, I pulled. And then at about three months of having pulled all of this stuff, I would add one thing in and wait 28 days. 
This isn't your average Whole30 or GAPS diet where you can add it in and know within three or five days that it's a problem. This is you add one thing in and wait 28 days to find out if it's going to cause pain again or not. And so this is what I was doing all, well, part of 2018, I guess December 2018, into 2019, and then we got pregnant with my baby in summer of 2019, and I was like, woohoo, pregnancy, no pain! <laughs> Gave birth to her April of 2020, six months to the day after my second daughter was born, the period pain came back like it had never gone away. And so I went back to the things that I already knew made it worse, sugar being the main number one thing that made it worse, pulled that out, pulled some other stuff out, and began this what felt like very, very laborious process, again, of trying to figure out what all these other pieces were that would make me be in so much pain. All the while doing research, doing research, doing research, doing research. And in March of 2021, March last year, I did something that I now run and I call endocrine reset. It was a four day food based reset. Now I have learned through various people doing it that it is for a very specific um, set of circumstances that it would apply to you for a hormonal reset, reset. So it's not for everyone, but it is for a lot of people, especially if you have anything close to what I'm describing. And so I did this in March last year at the perfect point in my cycle because you don't want to do it in fall or winter of your cycle. Do not cleanse. Do not intermittent fast in the fall or the winter of your cycle. Please, 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 please. And so I did it at the perfect point in my cycle, and then I waited. Got my period. I was in full flow. I was not spotting. I was like in full flow. I was like, hmm. And it was in the evening. I was like, all right, well, maybe tomorrow will be the day that, you know, I'm laid out flat. That night I crawl into bed and I start to have some pain. And I'm like, I really should go get a heating pad or a hot water bottle, but I don't want to move. I'm tired. And so I just rolled onto my stomach and that counter pressure on my stomach was enough to make it not bad for the night. Sweet made it through the night without messing the sheets up, made it through the night without being woke up with a cramp. Next day, waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like it's a little crampy, but it's not clamping down like labor. It's not gushing like it usually does. By the third day, I'm like, this worked. This endocrine reset fixed my pain by like 85%. This worked. And so I'm super excited and I turn it around and I'm like, okay, everybody needs to know this. And so like I said, I now have that housed in a program called endocrine reset. And then the next month was a little more crampy. It wasn't like my major 30 hour pain, but it was more than the previous month. I was like, all right, if I have to do a four day food reset every single month of the rest of my life, I will do that over a hysterectomy. That's where I was at. My mom had had a hysterectomy. My aunt had had a hysterectomy. My grandma had had a hysterectomy. And we're going to look more at that in a minute because it's very, very significant to the daughter piece. June last year, I dove into this daughter piece. So did the reset in March. April's period was way better. May's was better. Not as good as April's, but better. June's was even a little bit worse, but the thing about June's was I passed out from the pain. Like, the pain was there, and I was like, okay, you've got to do another reset. I had to pee. I went to the bathroom. I'm sitting there. I'm trying to relax muscles enough that it can actually go through because, like I said, it was like my pelvic girdle was so inflamed that only one orifice could work, and when it was a period, it was that one. And all of a sudden, like, my ears are ringing, and my vision is getting foggy, and I lean against the back of the toilet, and I'm like, okay, I'm passing out. And I was there enough to feel my bladder empty, and then I came back. It's like my body is like, you need to do this. This is how it's going to happen. That was the first time that had ever happened, and I was like, okay, there's more to this than physical. 
I've got to find something more. And it wasn't until actually the spring of 2021 that I learned that my aunt had had a hysterectomy for fibroid tumors. I knew my mom had had, but it wasn't until the spring of 2021 that I learned her sister had also. And her mother, my grandma had also. And her mother had had some sort of female problem. Like, you know, it was far enough back that we didn't have a diagnosis of fibroid tumors at that point, but she had some sort of female problem. Okay, this is not just me. It's not just mom and me. And there's a reason it didn't come out back after my sons were born. It came back after my daughters were born. This is a generational motherhood wound issue manifesting from my womb space, the thing that radiates out and creates life, creates paradigm shifts, creates beliefs, creates books, creates music, creates life. Let's dig into the motherhood wound piece of this. Excuse me. And so that is what I did in June of 2021. July of 2021, I had my first completely 1,000% pain-free period. Not even a cramp. August, I'm going, is it going to hurt? It didn't hurt. <gasps> two, two in a row. Three in a row. Four in a row. Eight in a row. I just had my 13th pain-free, period. Not even a cramp. We think cramps are normal. Cramps are not normal. They might be normal, but they're not supposed to be a part of your biology. So this was twofold. It was very physical in the endocrine reset and the emotional peace, the generational roots and wounds had to be addressed also. It was twofold. By November, the bloat was gone. In October, I started a program that I run now called 75 Fem. I was doing my workouts according to cycle phase. I was, excuse me, eating according to cycle phase. I was running my life by my cycle phases. Excuse me. And by November, the bloat was completely gone. And this last period that I had, the 13th one that was pain-free, was finally less than eight days. It was six. Average period length should be between four and seven. I had been running at eight. This is not necessarily a quick fix. Like the endocrine reset is a great place to begin if it's appropriate for your symptoms, which that would need to be a conversation between you and I. But it's a lifestyle. You look at your schedule when you're planning swimming lessons and karate. You look at your schedule, your cycle schedule, when you're planning your business activities. When you begin to plan your dates, for the time that you're going to actually be in the mood the most. Or you plan your date knowing you're not going to fully be in the mood and you're going to need extra oomph. When you know these things and you plan your life by your biology, the flaky, inconsistent failure of womanhood falls away. It falls away. And you see the beautiful creation that you are. Now, Stephanie had a comment up here that I wanted to come back to. She says, I do real like I'm struggling with mental, I do feel maybe like I'm struggling with mental health most days. And this is starting to make sense on why one week I'm a huge extrovert and suddenly I'm an introvert and just want to be left alone. Yes. Yes. One of my favorite testimonials from my client, a client um, who's actually in 75 Fem right now is that she was actually looking to get on mental health meds for bipolar disorder because of exactly what you just said, Stephanie. She's like, I would be this person this week and the next week I was not this person. And it just, I'm aware enough of myself that I knew there was something wrong and I was willing to go on meds if it would fix it. But all she needed was to learn her cycle 
work with me. She's in one-on-one -on -one with me. She has access to a few of my programs and she's beginning to see results. Her last period was two times better than the previous ones. It's so amazing. So looking at the, the generational piece that I have here from my grandma, from my mom, I don't know about my great grandma very much other than she had like eight or nine kids. My grandma had five kids by the time she was 22. My grandpa was an entrepreneur who was a millionaire in the 70s. He had a, a lumber company. And my mom was the oldest of those five kids. And by the time she was 13 years old, grandpa had made her the foreman of the sawmill. She was hiring men. She was firing men. She was bossing men at 13 years old. Do you know how masculine, how much of your masculine you have to tap into every single day to manage men, period, never mind as a 13-year-old? My grandma cooked breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the sawmill crew, for all of their employees, for five kids, regardless of whether she was postpartum or not. Every day, every day, every day, the damage that was done from these women operating from necessity in these masculine, masculine ways did damage generationally to my mom and me and my aunt but it stops with me. The sign was when it came back after my daughters. It stops with me. I am doing everything I possibly can so that they never ever know the pain that the women in our line have known. Holy crap, I didn't know this was gonna happen. Okay. Here we are. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I just talked about you. Okay. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself in my notes, which is a good thing. This is beautiful. So in our womb space, and I covered this a little bit yesterday, so make sure you register and catch module one. But in your womb space, that space that makes us woman... Womb, womb man, the place that holds our femme power, the power to create life, be it human life, be it a book, be it a music album, be it a paradigm shift, be it a system of beliefs, the power comes and radiates from your womb space. Money. Wealth radiates from your womb space as a woman. That space will have scars if you have an ancestral line like what I just described. And I would bet 90% of the population does, the female population. You will manifest those scars as PMDD, endometriosis, infertility. There's a lot of different factors that play into infertility, but this is one. Fibroids and more. You name any female specific problem, it comes back to scars in your womb space that are generationally deep. I almost guarantee it. Cycle syncing brings those into light and allows you the most beautiful place to begin to heal them. When you begin to use the high energy phases of your cycle, your spring and your summer for high production and plan to honor your fall and your winter of your cycle, the place where your wounds most often are brought to light is fall and winter. If you clear the static in fall and winter so that you can focus on those wounds and you can work towards healing them, you stop that scarring in your line. You move into the woman you were meant to be. Linda says she always blamed her parents, but it goes back way farther than them. A thousand percent, dear. 
You open yourself up to receive the deepest level of self-care that you have ever experienced in your life. Ever. You open yourself up to honor yourself in the deepest ways you have ever imagined. When you do that, you begin to clear what I call the static. And I dive into this in two programs. I dive into it in the Sacred Critic, which is coming late fall slash winter this year, the Sacred Critic. And I dive into it in the Period Portal. The Period Portal is super fun. They're, they're all fun. Excuse me, but the Period Portal is super fun because when you clear the static, you actually make your veil even thinner and you open up space to receive divine downloads, divine inspiration. Inspiration. Some people call it channeling. When you clear that static in your fall and your winter, that veil gets so thin, you have idea after idea after idea after idea after idea, and you're actually able to tap into the potential that you have and move into the woman that you were created to be and do the gifts, do the calling that has been put on your life from creation. But as long as we continue to listen to the narrative that says we're flaky, flawed, inconsistent, as long as we continue to beat ourselves up and we don't even give ourselves space to clear that static, to heal those scars, you will never do what you were put on this earth to do. You might do a fraction of it, but you will never reach the fullness that it could be. The period portal I ran last year, and it is contained inside of my vault, Resonance. I talked about it in Module 1. I will talk about it at the end of this video. So this is what the patriarchy wants. And we talked about this yesterday. This, this is, if you're needing context, go watch Module 1. But this is what the patriarchy wants. They want this narrative to reinforce that we're flaky, that we're flawed. You have to see beyond that. You have to silence the noise. And the best way to do that is to cycle sync your life. Cycle sync your business. Cycle sync your parenting. Cycle sync your relationship. Yes, with your partner, but all of your relationships. If you have a coffee date scheduled with a best friend and you feel like curling up on the couch, there's nothing wrong with you. And actually you give her permission to do this at a different time if you call and say, hey, I'm feeling really introspective. I don't wanna go anywhere today. I'm gonna to cancel. What woman doesn't like it when you honor yourself? A hurt one, but you just gave her permission to heal because you're choosing to heal. Excuse me. You're dating. I'm in a mastermind with a beautiful woman who's dating right now, and she's cycle syncing her dates. It's freaking am amazing. Every single area of your life, when you start to cycle sync every single area of your life, you heal in the most amazing ways. Ways that people have strove for for years. Like you see a problem. Mine happens to be the root of perfectionism. I worked on that thing for freaking years. It wasn't until I began to cycle sync and allow my masculine to just heal that the root of perfection just kind of evaporated. It wasn't anything that I had to do for the perfection root. It was simply that I had to cycle sync my life and it healed. And I don't mean just small things. I mean the generational pieces. Your undercurrent that runs in your DNA that you don't even know about, you get to heal that through cycle syncing. My great, 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 great grandma was a full-blooded Cherokee when westward expansion was happening. I have no idea the horrors that are in my DNA no idea what my undercurrent actually is. But I do know that through cycle thinking, I'm healing it piece by piece by piece by piece by piece. But how? How do I cycle sync my life? This is why you're here. 
Ooh, and it's almost four o'clock. Okay. How do I cycle think my life? So time today, obviously it's almost four o'clock, would not permit me to tell you all the pieces of how to cycle sync your life, but we're going to look at it as quickly as I can here real quick because I only have about 15 more minutes before we go to karate. So if you want all of the, like I said, time won't permit it. I have hundreds of hours in my vault resonance on how to cycle sync your life, but let's take a quick peek. Let me know in the comments if you want a quick peek. Do you want a quick peek? I'm going to wet my whistle here. Ooh, I see somebody else just jumped on, jumped on Fit Love Freedom. I don't know your name, but welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. <laughs> Linda wants them. Awesome. Beautiful. Okay. So the basics, the spring and the summer of your cycle. The spring of your cycle is the follicular phase. This will make more sense after you watch module one. And the summer of your cycle is your ovulatory phase. So these phases of your cycle is when your testosterone, yes, women have testosterone, is rising and your estrogen is rising. You have more patience with your children at this point because estrogen is our mothering hormone. Like it gives you more patience in situations where you're like, okay, we got to calm down. Let's talk this through. Um, it gives you more patience in situations where, or more, more emotional intelligence in situations where you have to go have a confrontation with someone. Now, I don't like the word confrontation, but that's the easiest blanket word to tell you exactly what I mean. You're going to be in more self-composure in the spring and summer of your cycle if you needed to go have such a conversation with someone. Now, there's strengths in their other phases of your cycle if you needed to go have such a conversation. You will own your truth more in the fall of your cycle and the winter of your cycle. But if you want to be fully in self-composure when you have a conversation like this, but you also want to advocate for yourself, the best time to do it is in the summer of your cycle. This is the high energy phase of your cycle. So like I said, I'm at the tail end of my springtime I'm at the tail end of my follicular phase and I'm moving into the summer or the ovulatory phase of my cycle. I'm supposed to ovulate like Saturday or Sunday. I ovulated late last month and yet my period was the shortest that it's been. So things are moving, things are shifting, things are healing, which is freaking phenomenal. So excited to see at what point I actually ovulate this month. But this is why we're in flow. Everything I do is an ish. So about day 14-ish of my cycle is when I ovulate. About day 7 to 12 is my follicular phase of my cycle. So when I was planning this free masterclass, I knew I wanted to plan it for the spring and summer of my cycle because I'd have my highest energy. I'm actually my most magnetic at this point. And let's see here. I also knew that I would have the bandwidth for a three-day long 90 minute a piece almost master class and karate and swimming lessons spring and summer of my cycle is this making sense is this clicking um linda says i'm going into summertime doing a little dancey dance while i'm saying that beautiful yay i plan a conversation for monday because of my cycle this is so beautiful oh my gosh yes this is the wonder woman phase of your cycle this is when you can get up at five because the kids are up. You can read your Bible if that's what you do. You can meditate if that's what you do. You can bake some bread before breakfast. You can make a home cooked breakfast. You can take your kids to story time. You can come home and you can smash or slay your afternoon work hours. You can turn around and go to karate. You can come home and cook a meal from scratch and you can have an epic conversation and intimate time with your husband in the evening. And you're like, wow, why can't I do this every day? And then two weeks later, you're like, you want me to go to karate? We had mac and cheese for lunch. <laughs> you, you, you want me to go see people? What? And this is where we can get that mental health disorder feeling because we're trained that we should be able to do Wonder Woman all the time. And when you can't, you're flaky, you're a failure, and you're inconsistent. Reality is your biology doesn't set you up like that. You are at the peak, and this is hilarious to me, you're at the peak of your hormones 
when you're ovulating. You have the most hormones in your system during your Wonder Woman moments. And when people say I'm hormonal is actually when you have none. So right before you start to bleed and people are like, oh, I'm so hormonal or, oh, you're so hormonal, you actually have basically no hormones flowing. Like you have hormones. You can't sleep without hormones. Vitamin D is a hormone, but you don't have very many flowing in your system at that point. When you bleed is when your hormones are low. And so when people say I'm hormonal, I'm like, really? You're ovulating? They're like, no, what are you talking about? Anyway, my own little cycle thinking caveat there. But so if you want to plan to be Wonder Woman all the time, which is what the patriarchy wants, they want you to be on all the time. They want you to be high energy all the time. It sets you up to feel like a failure. Would it not be better to recognize that some of the time your hormones are high and you can be Wonder Woman and some of the time your hormones are low and that expectation is absolutely absurd? Would that not be better? So I plan for my Wonder Woman week when I have Wonder Woman week. I plan all the things. And even then you can over plan. Like, you know, you still have bandwidth. It's broader, but you still have, you know, limits. And so I am at my limits this week. Like last night I was very, very tired between swimming, karate, free master class, all of this amazing juiciness. And it's okay because I can handle it right now. But in two weeks, I'm going to be blocking out my work hours and going to get a massage on a day that I'm going to take the kids to karate because your girl needs some self-care so that I can even manage to take them to karate. And that's okay. And when I started giving myself these permissions, my life changed so dramatically. It's okay for the nanny to come and me to take a nap in my work hours when I'm in the fall and winter of my cycle because that's what my body needs right then. That is the best way to serve my business. That is the best way to serve my family. That is the best way to serve my creator that made me like this in that moment. We're only on page four of seven. Okay. This takes the pressure off. This gives you permission to rest when your body needs to rest. This gives you permission to be Wonder Woman when it's appropriate to be Wonder Woman and not when it's not. I used to look at a sink full of dishes, the fact that I hadn't weeded anything in a while, a clean laundry basket or five, and the floor that needed to be swept and sit in a pile of overwhelm and exhaustion and think to myself, why did you ever think you could actually be a wife and a mom? What were you thinking? Obviously you can't handle this. You haven't showered in three days. You can't even keep up with the dishes. Never mind play with your kids or be sexy for your husband. What is wrong with you? Look at that Proverbs 31 woman. She did all of these things. What's wrong with you, Sarah? I can't even keep my sink shined. Anybody ever followed Fly Lady? Heck, even your mom, you know, did more Proverbs 31-ish stuff than you are. Your mother-in-law. All of these women in your life that can do the Proverbs 31 woman, but what the heck is wrong with you? The thing was, is that I wanted to. I desperately wanted to. I wanted to for myself. I wanted to prove that I could for me. I would make lists and charts. I would buy the planners and the pens. I would invest in the time management systems. I would get it all laid out and it'd go really well for seven to ten days and then it wouldn't 
And then I wouldn't even start again when I felt like it again because I'd already failed once and I didn't really want to add another failure to it. So why even start again? I lived my life like this for so long. Thank you, Stephanie. She says she shared it on Messenger with her friend. Thank you, dear. Now, see, Amy, I don't think the Proverbs 31 woman was a myth. I think that our English translation has misconstrued what the Proverbs 31 woman was. And I think, because this is red tent days still, the Proverbs 31 woman honored her cycle in all things. She had red tent days. She did all the things, but she did them phase by phase by phase by appropriate phase by appropriate phase by appropriate phase. I actually have a whole time management system by cycle phase if you wanted that. That's in the vault. It's in resonance. It's called time flow. So I would beat myself up over the fact that I'd spent money on the pens and the planners and the time management system. And then I quit after two weeks. And because of this mental dialogue, again, I wouldn't start again when my energy rose back up because I didn't want to be a failure again, like I already said. And this is the problem when you put a cyclical human, and men actually are cyclical too, I covered that yesterday, into a linear system. You set yourself up to fail. And you set yourself up to fail. And you set yourself up to fail. We end up beat down and discouraged. And we can't be kept there. And we can be, sorry, we can be kept there so easily unless we can see the other side. Unless we can see how we, as women, operate with this beautiful ebb and flow. And I cover it in detail in the program I call Left Them. So unless we can see that, and we can fit our cyclical, then we can fit our cyclical self into a linear system. And once you see that, and you take your cyclical self, and you put it into the linear system, like I have explained to you this entire course like this week the cyclical me can do all the things in two weeks the cyclical me can't i will tone down all the things and two weeks after that the cyclical me can do all the things and i will and two weeks later i won't and it'll be okay and two weeks later i will and then i won't and then i will and then i won't and then i will and then i won't and then i will and then I won't. And I have given myself absolute and utter permission that this is exactly how it's meant to be because it is. And I'm free. I'm free to be me. This is our femme power. It is the superpower that has been gifted to women and then been squashed by the patriarchy. Tomorrow we're going to look at the masculine half of your cycle and the feminine half of your cycle. We're going to play there a little bit. We're going to look at some of the healing that can happen that's like backdoor healing. I healed that perfectionism root through honoring the masculine and feminine halves of my cycle without addressing the perfectionism root. After I tried to address it for like five years, I would fruit to the root it. I would do all the things. I would try and give myself evidence that I didn't have to be a perfectionist and that I could be a perfectionist. And it didn't heal until I started honoring the masculine half of my cycle and the feminine half of my cycle, and then it healed all on its own. Like the mosquito bite on my leg that I just ignore, and it heals. That root of perfectionism can be as minor as a mosquito bite. Yes, Linda. Oh, Stephanie, doesn't have to be your life anymore, dear. It can be so much more beautiful. This is where this becomes so powerful, is when we begin to embrace this masculine, feminine ebb and flow. So we're going to draw one more name here in a moment. Thank you so much for watching this. Thank you so much for sharing this. When I get the link for you to register, please go ahead and register so you know where Module 3 is going to be tomorrow. 
After I draw this name, I'm going to share with you different ways that you can be in my programs, that you can be in my world, that you can dive deeper into this and begin to understand it and implement it. If you feel complete with the training today, after this name is drawn, you are free to go. But if you would like to hear the ways that you can deepen this conversation, I invite you to stay for another few minutes while I cover those. <gasps> Crystal Loback! Woo! Crystal Loback, you have... 111 coaching dollars also. So you can put that to anything I'm about to say. Endocrine reset. So that is the reset that I did in March of 2021. You can still be a perfectionist, Stephanie. It can just look different. It can look feminine. So Endocrine Reset is the program that I ran in March of 2021 that improved my period pain by 85%. It is $333 to a la carte, and I will let you a la carte endocrine reset. It is a fantastic program. Again, though, there are some prerequisites because I've had some people that have different hormone imbalances than what mine was, and it actually is not set up for that system. So after I have some questions with you, we can proceed with endocrine reset. So it is $333. Yay! Thank you, Jenny, for saying congratulations to Crystal. You can bundle Endocrine Reset, which is a four-day food reset, fueling the feminine, and food and flow. So it matters how you cook your food by cycle phase. Your body metabolizes differently at different points in your cycle. What you eat matters at different points in your cycle. If you want to support your femme power, your beautiful female body in the best possible way, you want to eat by cycle phase and you want to cook by cycle phase. So you can do endocrine reset and you can reset your hormones in a four-day food-based reset at the proper point in your cycle. But if you don't know what to do after that, you're going to find yourself in the same boat not very long later. So I'm letting you bundle together Endocrine Reset, which is $333, Fueling the Feminine, which is $333, Food and Flow, which is $555. Altogether, it would be $1,222. I'm letting you bundle them all together for $888. This bundle offer is only good until June 30th when this masterclass closes. So... If you want the bundle, the Endocrine Reset bundle is what we're calling that, just jump in Messenger either on Instagram or on Facebook and let me know, Sarah, I want the link for the Endocrine Reset bundle. Next, the Sacred Critic is not happening until late fall, early winter of this year. So, and, and it's so cool because the Sacred Critic comes in the late fall, early winter of your cycle. And so we're going to mirror it with the seasons and we're going to run the sacred critic in the late fall, early winter of the Northern Hemisphere's cycle. And so you can get it right now in like pre, 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 pre sale at $555. If you need a payment plan between now and then, I will do a six pay option for you so that you can make sure you are in the sacred critic in the early fall and when I'm sorry, in the late fall, early winter of this year. Sorry, my children are ready for me to be out there for karate. <laughs> They're making a lot of noise right now. So again, just message me, say, Sarah, I want sacred critic. I want the paid in full 555 or I want a payment plan and I'll set you up on a payment plan. La Femme. So I ran La Femme last year in June. I will be running it again this winter. La Femme is freaking phenomenal, and we'll actually talk more about it tomorrow. But La Femme shows you the very, very masculine hormone pieces of what your cycle looks like, the ebb and flow that's there. But La Femme dives deep into the energetic ebb and flow pieces of your cycle. Like, it is the ultimate femme class. Like, I absolutely love it. That is really loud. 
absolutely love La Femme. So it is um, in pre 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 sale also for this winter at $555. Again, I will offer you a six pay on that one also if you would like to. So just message me, say, Sarah, I want the link for La Femme. Sarah, I want the link for Sacred Critic. Sarah, I want the six pay for La Femme, whatever that looks like for you. And again, these offers, um, the bundle offers are done. And actually the a la carte offers are done at this point. They will come again, but they are going away June 30th. Next, we have the content collection. Give me just a second. That is way too loud. Guys, I'm still on duty. Do not stop me. Okay, there we go. I'm a mom too. Mom first. Next, we have the content collection. The content collection is every single program that I run for the next 12 months. So... This summer, when we're in the summer of the 12 month cycle, I am running the summer pieces of my programs. So I am running the funnels pieces. I'm running the conversion pieces. I'm running all of the business pieces, how to cycle sync your business in the summer. So you have access to those programs if you're inside the content collection. If you a la carte them, it's like 800 bucks a month. If you do the content collection, it's $555 per month. <laughs> it is a 12 month commitment and you can pay in full at 6,111, which saves you like an entire micro course even. So if you did the content collection, you'd have all of those summer bundle pieces for your business. You would have the sacred critic that we just talked about. You would have La Femme that is coming. You would have the period portal because I plan on running it again in the next 12 months, and anything else that I run, you will have access to it at that $555 per month. It's probably it's the best deal unless you want the vault. If you want all of the programs that I have ran before, that is inside of Resonance. So Resonance has all of the programs that I ran last year. It has Endocrine Reset. It has Food and Flow. It has Fueling the Feminine. It has the ones that are how to work out by your cycle. It has the original La Femme. It has the original period portal. It has in the mood, how to cycle sync your orgasms and guarantee when you and your husband are going to, or you and your partner are going to have the best time and what to do when it's maybe not the best time, but make it the best time. And so all of these courses are inside of resonance. You also get one VIP day with me per month where you can come in and you can ask questions. You can get laser coaching. You can be like, Sarah, I just went through La Femme and I have this question and this question and this question that was not included in the original Q&A. Can you please answer these for me? You can bring that into the VIP day. So that if you want resonance, it is a 12 month commitment. Also, it is $888 per month or you can pay in full at 10K and you're just in everything that I run in the next 12 months, plus you get the content vault. Super amazing deal. So that and the content collection, like it's, it's a huge toss up as to which one of those is like the best way to jump into my world. If you're like, Sarah, I really know that I have these generational wounding pieces and I just want some focused one-on-one -on -one time with you to dig into these and to start to heal, I highly encourage you to get a one-on-one -on -one coaching package. I have a three-month package, I have a six-month package, and I have a 12-month package. So if you want to look at those, you want to look at payment plans on those, just jump in Messenger and we can talk about some one-on-one -on -one coaching packages to just really, really dig in and dive in deep and get some healing done for you on a physical, energetic, and emotional level, and generational level. And then the last piece that I have to offer you is the Beautiful Rhythm Mastermind. So you get all the programs I run in the next 12 months, you get all the content that's already in the vault, you get access to the VIP day that's included in resonance and you get access to me and the other ladies that are inside the beautiful rhythm 
mastermind inside of Marco Polo Monday through Friday. So you can come in there, you can ask questions, you can get coaching, you can be like, oh my gosh, this is going on, what do I do? You can come in and be like, I'm so excited, I just ran this thing in the best point in my cycle, and it's amazing, and we can celebrate you. Like, it is the place to come hang for all the pieces of your life to cycle sync it and make your life the most amazing thing that it can possibly be and genuinely, truly tap your femme power. It is $22,222 paid in full for the year. And that's 12 months. It's not just till December. Or you can do monthly payments of $1,999 for those 12 months. Totally up to you. So if any of these pieces are calling your name, just jump in Messenger and I will get you links for whichever pieces they are. If you have questions about them, jump in Messenger, ask me your questions, and just know that the bundle options and the a la carte options will go away June 30th when this masterclass closes. And as soon as I'm done here, I will get the link for you to register so that you know where module three is happening. Thank you all for hanging out with me. I love you and I will see you for module three tomorrow, Friday, June 24th at 5 p.m. Eastern time, but you don't know where until you register.